All right. Things are better now. It's cold in here. No one asked. Just. Hey, welcome back to our stupid Rex of Corbin. You can follow us on Instagram, Twitter for more juicy content. The Thank dope. you to everybody who supports us on Patreon. Follow us for your Twitter account, subscribe, and the like button. And today, yeah. we got a do uh, it. We got a food video. Oh uh, yes! It's called Chennai's Dosa King of India Street Food. Oh. Dose. Bring it on! Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, uh the best of India food review show thingy. Oh, so. uh, come on. You won't be hungry after watching this. Food porn. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Wow. The dosa. They can be small. A little bready, a little crunchy on the outside. They can be huge. That is terrific. They can be empty inside or stuffed with tons of fillings. Oh, this thing is loaded up. But so far, so good. They can be cheap and they can be expensive. Whoa. Hmm? Oh, but in this video, we've come to the city of Chennai, indulging in South Indian food in an effort to uncover the best dosas in this country. But first, let's back up. Down, they're just thinking they are. Another little wannabe gangster trying to play hard. Chennai boasts a lineup of iconic Indian street foods. Think ready at Lampam's, spicy atto, and of course, the unbeatable dosa. Today, we're diving deep into the secrets of this iconic crepe and exploring its most unique and exotic variations. From a premium dosa topped with bone marrow. It's oily, buttery, but kind of gritty too. I think that's the bone. Oh, I ate too far. To a mega sized monster over five feet long. Get ready for the ultimate tour of Chennai's most iconic street food creation. Dosas. They're not your typical French crepe. These bad boys are the rock stars of South Indian cuisine. Crispy pancakes made from fermented rice and lentil batter. Even playing is quite good. In Chennai, dosas aren't just a dish, they're a way of life, an expression of the city's culinary soul, presented in various shapes, sizes, and with mysterious fillings. At our first dosa stop, we land at a street side restaurant that's been dishing out this oh, regular oh, delight yeah. to Chennai locals for over 72 years. That's older than your mom. <laughs> <laughs> nice. The only Why did he get any shit about it? are filled with raw eggs. சாப்பிடுறாங்க <laughs> 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 Meet the famous half prawn dosa, a signature creation of this shop. Legend has it that five years ago, a family friend requested a dosa topped with prawn curry and a half-boiled egg. The owner happily obliged, and soon it became the dish everyone craved, earning its permanent spot on the a menu. A half-boiled egg? To prepare oh, this unique fire. dish, spread black gram dosa batter on a hot tawa. I spread that all over your mother. Made the best dose Next, ever. Crack in two chicken eggs. Well, my mom's hot. Then it's time for the curry, prepared with fresh prawns, curry leaves, black pepper, tomatoes, cashmere chili, turmeric, coriander powder, and a dozen God. other spices. Spread it along all four sides of the dosa and fold it inwards. This is called Indian origami. <laughs> Serve with chicken gravy, mutton gravy, and prawn gravy for extra oh flavor. Oh my goodness. That looks. Oh, God. Oh. If you like your eggs on the rare side, then the crisp outer layer is the perfect match for the gooey half cooked eggs and the flavorful prawn curry on the inside. Oh! Snuff How much in flavor is in that? Coat of flavor. Goo packet. Oh. 
That looked amazing. You can top them with everything from meats to veggies and even sweets. They're basically the blank canvas of Indian street food. At our next stop, these street food Picassos are crafting over a hundred unique dosa variations in the heart of Chennai. And we found one that hits close to home. Introducing the macaroni dosa. A unique creation. What? Affordable ingredients are blended together to create something magical. At least that's what some guy in a back alley of India told me. <laughs> Start with the split chickpea dosa batter. Toss in diced red onions, green bell peppers, and tomatoes. Add a dollop of butter, some mayo, a kick of Szechuan sauce, and fresh cream. Then the pasta. Toss in our macaroni that's already been boiled. Drizzle some tomato puree and give it a good smash. I would, I would eat the shit out of that. <laughs> but it does seem like it's destroying Indian culture for cheese. sure. For sure. You were expecting a typical macaroni and cheese. Well, you won't find that here. This isn't a pasta dish. It's also not fusion cuisine. It's Indian innovation on steriary aeroids. <laughs> here, they've taken everyday ingredients, spiced them up, uh... flavors, and bam. Something you'll recognize, but something also that will leave your mouth perplexed. I wonder what that tastes like. Probably macaroni on a dosa. Some people believe that a local priest accidentally invented the dosa when attempting to bypass religious restrictions and drink alcohol. We've all been there, especially <laughs> when liquor stores are closed on a Sunday. He fermented rice, but when it didn't work as intended, he poured the mixture into a pan and accidentally created the dosa as we know it huh. today. Therefore, the word dosa actually comes from the Kannada word dosha, meaning vice or sin. Coming up, we have one of the really? most beautiful dosas ever made, topped with forbidden beef bone marrow. Oh, oh my stars. Bone marrow. It's the fatty tissue inside your bones. It's responsible for creating billions of blood cells every day. It creates red blood cells that carry oxygen so you can breathe, and white blood cells that help you fight infections. Thanks, bone marrow. But if you put down the science book and pick up a cookbook, You'll find the bone marrow a little weird. so freaking delicious. Oh my god, that's good. This is a nalil dosa. It's the only dosa Rick in love that bone marrow. beef. Controversial ingredients. Look, here's a comment from one of our viewers saying that we should never show beef on the channel again. People get really upset about it. Perhaps because the consumption of beef is illegal in many states in India. Mm. Hmm. It starts by spreading out the black grand batter on a hot kawa. Now, here comes the star of the show. The slow-cooked, melt-in-your-mouth. Poking the bear, I like it. Tap and scrape every last bit of flavor out. Top it with an egg and give it a nice hearty spread. Next, a sprinkle of their secret homemade spice blend and a touch of fresh coriander for that extra zing. Oh. Hold it up and get ready to savor this delight. I love Sir, dosa. Oh. All forms, man. The dosa becomes exceptionally. I folded up your mom and called it a dosa. The richness of the bone nice. marrow, the fermented sourness of the batter, mixed with the strong, rich, beefy notes, turns this dish into a premium flavor experience. Oh. Mm. Soon, we'll try the biggest dosa Whoa. you'll find in Chennai. But before that, let's explore a one-of-a-kind creation resembling a spider's web. Its ingenious presentation caused a culinary frenzy, swiftly going viral online and across the city. Or gravy panita and the net dosa panni, grip of mari panni, say sapro. Other than a conjo twist of Purla, Adela, Tapani now. Ade Maida, egg, coconut milk, and mix pan or batter, pancake batter. Other than Malaysia dish roti jala, the birko, as the idea of Chitina, the Madri Pandana. Other china the roll panni kupanga, Malaysia, other than my pipana, alar, or a pizza, or in the Kukla, being the Yosa, they not a tapping and they not a signature dish. Say hello to the spider web dosa. Inspired by the flavors of the murtabak in Malaysia, the stall owner put her own unique artistic spin on this dish, setting off a citywide craze. This isn't your typical fried folded dough. Oh no, it's a creative edible masterpiece. 
Here, she crafts two lentil batter pancakes using a unique pouring technique, creating a mesmerizing spider web pattern. Ha! Huh. I don't recall ever seeing that. With eggs, generously pouring them over one pancake. Then layering on a flavorful mix of shredded chicken masala, onions, green peppers, and tomatoes. To amp up the flavor more, she adds some mayo, a heavy shower of grated cheese, a pinch of salt, and her secret spice blend. She places the second pancake on top, wow. cuts the pieces with a pizza cutter, and she finishes by painting on a happy face with ketchup. Wow, looks like this dosa took some Prozac. Prozac. The dosa's crispiness adds an incredible crunch, perfectly pairing with the flavorful shredded chicken. Sauces. That's so cool. Inside. It's a truly satisfying it. bite that explains why this dish has taken the internet by storm. That looks really interesting. Finally, it's time for the ultimate culinary spectacle, a mammoth dosa that stretches an impressive five feet and dominates the food scene in the heart of Chennai. Step right up for the family dosa. It's almost taller than my wife. And size. This dosa is practically an open invitation for the whole village to join in. Or it could just feed one of this guy. <laughs> wow, look at that thing. How much do you think it is? Like five Probably. Yeah, like five or six bucks. As this is three times the size of a regular dosa, we begin with three huge dosa circles made from black bread batter. Then we connect them together, forming a colossal base to host the flavors. Then a generous splash of clarified butter, or ghee, graces this creation before it's carefully rolled out. Serve with wow. coconut chutney, potato masala, and tomato chutney. Avid fans of this restaurant enjoy the authentic flavors of the traditional plain dosa. I can eat that whole they thing on my own. Slightly sour with a sweet and so? aftertaste yep. from the lentils. Despite oh, its yep. size, the shell remains perfectly crispy throughout, and each bite packs a lot of flavor. The spiced potato masala perfectly complements the sourness of the dough. Mm -hmm. Yes, crispy. The coconut and coriander chutney add a hint of freshness, and the samba provides undeniable richness. Ah! 480. 480. God damn. So after diving into the world of doses all day, it is now decision time. Which of these five the unique first one actually looked the best to me. Was it the fresh half-boiled prom that dosa? One. The inventive macaroni dosa? The sinful bone marrow dosa? The virus? Yeah, I'm going bone dosa, marrow. Or the colossal family dosa? They all look delicious. Yeah, I'd love all of them. Love to try every single one of those. I never imagined such inventive spins on this dish. And while I love them all, the macaroni dosa won me over. Yeah. I just hope next time they make a mac and cheese option. So how about you? Which one of these will you try? I'd eat your the next shit out of the macaroni one for Let sure. Let me know downstairs in the comments. Yeah, that's up your alley for sure. Indulgent feast for your senses. Oh, Be sure that. to subscribe to Best Ever Food India. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. Couple of couple of takeaways. When when doing a joke about bone marrow, I don't know that it's always a good look to show a bone marrow transplant kid in the hospital. Is that, what <laughs> that was weird. That yeah, what that was weird. Yeah, I see the bone marrow transplant kid. <laughs> and, you know, it's interesting. You know the the hot the thing he did with when he was talking about the uh, religious sentiments when you show me because I remember we had an our first year on the channel when we did our Oscar party. Yeah, I got a lot of hate because I showed the the barbecue we were doing. Um, we hear that a lot, you know, the religious sentiment stuff. There's, there's, there's like 4,000 different belief systems, organizations, um, uh, uh, groups in the world. And if everybody needed to make sure they didn't hurt someone else's religious sentiments, no one could do anything in public. I, I and I, I don't understand why people just don't extend a little more grace and recognize if it if it particularly offends you personally, then don't watch those things. Anytime we and, see videos, I say sorry, non veg people. Well, I shouldn't. Watch. Yeah, but like, I I can't tell you how many times I have seen or heard something that I found to be personally offensive, but I don't take it personally because this wasn't just made for me. I live in a world with 
so many different people with so many different belief systems that I can't make my beliefs the priority of the day. It just really confuses me. It makes me sad. I'm not sure I've ever been offended by something somebody said. Oh, I have many times, but so what? Unless just I'm like, like Ricky Gervais said, just because you're offended doesn't mean you're right. Well, personally, I'm always right, as we all know. Yeah. Uh, um, the only time I would be offended by something somebody would say is if it's about somebody that I love. Like, I'll, I, I well, yeah, like, I won't be offended by if you say anything about me, I can take that. But if it's like, but my wife or my kids or my parents, uh, and it's not like done in love. Like, it's not like this joke is, you know, in jest and we're all part of the joke. That'd be the only time I think I could usually be offended. Like, I'm not usually, I don't take people, what people say to me seriously enough to uh, usually care. Um, yeah. And I I have my own beliefs uh, on certain things and so. Yeah. And most of the times when I've, when I have really taken a deep dive into things that other people who claim to have the same beliefs I did, for example, like when. When uh, The Last Temptation of Christ came out, Scorsese's film, uh, the Catholic Church wanted to ban the film. Catholics were lining up saying, ban the film, ban the film. None of them had ever seen it. And when, when I saw it, I thought, why are you all losing your minds over this? When The Da Vinci Code came out, evangelicals were freaking oh, yeah. out that this is going to cause pastors to leave the faith. And I read the book and watched the film and thought, what in the world is everybody freaking out about? No idea. So – and I was I was a vegetarian for a couple of years, a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. I did not care if other people were eating meat in front of me, behind me, around me. I it that meat was meat. their prerogative. I wanted them to be vegetarian like me, but I wasn't pontificating and didn't get offended that they ate a hamburger in front of me. I me and Steph were it was more about just clean eating for a while, um, but we were basically almost almost vegan. Um, not fully, but, uh, it's just, it's also, my, I was, I, my biggest thing is I wish I could be that it's, uh, cause morally, I think I understand it fully. Um, I get it. Um, it's just so expensive here to be, uh, to be vegan or vegetarian, man. <laughs> it's so easy in India. Oh, it is, but I, I'm, I'm a big advocate. I'm a big advocate of the fact that design reveals purpose and we're designed to be omnivores. Yeah, you can think of that all you want. I don't care. Uh, it's, yeah. I under, I just understand the uh the 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 moral aspect behind uh people that uh for for vegan and, and vegetarian. Uh, yeah, that for me I don't I don't particularly I understand the cruelty aspect of what our food system does here in America and the way that they treat the animals is in many respects is extraordinarily immoral because it's got a level of cruelty. But I don't I don't have a particular problem with the killing of an animal to eat it because that's part of the way the planet works lots of animals kill other animals to survive um and i don't i don't have a particular problem with that aspect of it but i don't have a problem with people who do it's like i don't force that there's people who won't like paul mccartney is a vegetarian because he said i won't eat anything that has a face i i get that uh but i get I, that okay uh, more power to you paul I try all these doses they look so good um the mac I, it'd be interesting <laughs> to see what indians think of the macaroni and cheese because like i've yeah like I, I there was a restaurant here that once had like a pizza dosa and a chocolate dosa and i, sh I tweeted that and they were like that's an abomination <laughs> so i wonder what indian yeah, the sweet ones the sweet ones don't interest me i'm not a big sweets guy uh i don't i wonder what indians think about them but i would eat the shit out of that macaroni one um that looks absolutely yeah. wonderful anyways let us know what other videos we can react to down below Juice.